So what is this class about? Well, this class is about the hardware software interface. But to understand that, first let's see what's hardware. Well, hardware is a part of a computer made of atoms. It's the physical part of your uh, computing device. Okay? And software is this thing made of bits, which is the program that runs on top of your hardware. Okay? But for that to happen effectively, there are many, many layers of abstractions between the hardware and the software. Okay? And this is what we call the hardware software interface. And the reason we want you to understand what a hardware software interface is, is that it's going to uh, help you understand better how computers work. It's going to make you a more effective programmer. It's going to make you uh, better at writing efficient code. And it's just going to make you a better computer science scientist. So let's look at these three pieces of code here. So here we have a simple statement that does a conditional and performs an assignment here. And this is written in you know, a language like C or Java. Okay. Now this piece of code here is also a, uh, um, is, well, it's, it's also a program. And this is written in what we call the assembly language. Okay? The assembly language is just a much lower level language that's pretty close to hardware. And it just happens to be a abstraction, a simpler way of looking at machine code. Okay? So the machine code is just a sequence of zeros and ones. Processors only understand zeros and ones. It interprets them in different ways. Now, um, so what's in common between these three pieces of code? Well, all of them do exactly the same thing. They're equivalent. But you'd rather write in this language here because it's much easier, it's much more natural for humans to write. Okay? So it's much more human friendly. But as I said before, the hardware likes bit strings. So zeros and ones. So a digital computer likes zeros and ones because it's very easy to represent with electronic circuits because zeros is a low voltage and one can, can be represented as a high voltage. Okay? So uh, and the, the, the machine instruction is actually much shorter than, than the number of bits we would need to represent the characters in the assembly language. It's, just much, it's a much more dense encoding of the assembly, uh, the assembly instructions that we see here. Okay? But there's a very direct correspondence between these uh, are simple assembly instructions and some of the bits in machine code. Now, let's look at the hardware software interface from a historical perspective. So at first, the hardware, the hardware software interface was very, very simple because, uh, in, um, because hardware was simple. Hardware was very, very primitive when computers started. Okay? So humans were able to write code directly to hardware without any abstraction at all. But then people got to, and that means that software was also very primitive because the, uh, the, the software primitives reflected the hardware pretty closely. But then people got really excited about computers, and it's like, hey, computers can do all of these things, so they, started, they ended up writing more and more complex pieces of uh, code. That meant that humans could no longer you know, keep up with the complexity of, ri uh, of writing um, machine code directly. So uh, the assembly language was invented. The assembly language, as I said before, it's a very, very simple uh, computer programming language that's pretty close to what the hardware can do in terms of its primitives. And one assembly instruction translates to one machine instruction. Okay? So, but the big difference is that the assembly language is much easier for humans to read because they have, first of all, they have character strings as opposed to just bits. Okay? So humans can understand much, much easier, so it's much easier to read and write. And it can also use symbolic names for values. Okay? They can use things like register names, variables A, B, and so on. Okay? So now there's a piece of code here called assembler that takes a program written in assembly and generates zeros and ones machine code, which is what the hardware likes. But even then, that, that wasn't enough because you know, programs were getting more and more complex. So we needed yet another level of abstraction that's much higher level. Okay? So these are things, um, um, so these are languages, abstractions, languages like C and Java. They're much, much higher level and you can write statements like, you know, a equals B plus C, for example. Okay? And one statement in uh, this high-level language can translate to many, many uh, uh, assembly language instructions. Okay? So, but now we need yet another, uh, another component in our path from the user to the hardware here, which is the C compiler. Okay? The C compiler takes C code and generates assembly code. Remember that this is assembly. So, and that's much higher level, that means humans are much more productive at writing code for that. So now, let's look at the entire lifetime of a computer program. 
Okay, a, a computer pro program has three basic steps in its lifetime. There's coding time, which is the time that the human spent writing uh, the program in a high-level language like C. Compile time is the time it takes to get your C program and generates machine code executed by the hardware. Okay? And when the hardware is executing the code, we call that runtime. So um, now compile time is something that happens just once. And if you execute your program many, many, many times, that means that um, it can amortize the cost of compilation a lot. Right? Because you know, if you spend some time compiling the program, you're going to execute so many times. It doesn't matter if you spend a little bit more time doing compilation. Okay? And in fact, during this process here, sorry, do, do, during the, the, the compilation process, the compiler can spend a little bit more time generating the code in order to do optimizations that are going to make your program faster without having the programmer uh, improve the code itself. Although if you do want to generate really fast code, uh, you, you do want to regenerate. You do want to, to start with good algorithms first. Okay? So um, a big theme in this class then is the hardware software interface. Okay, so just some, so uh, that includes how the hardware, in, in other words, zeros and ones and process executing instructions relate to software. In other words, your your uh, for example your Java program. And the other big the other part of this theme is that computers are about abstractions. Computer systems are complex. In order for humans to understand and design effective computer systems, we need abstractions. Okay, so computing is a lot about abstractions. But we can't really forget reality. Well, the goal of an abstraction is to abstract reality and make it simpler to think about. But we don't want to completely ignore reality because that leads to inefficiencies, leads to other problems. Okay? So what are, we're also going to talk about uh, what are the abstractions that, that, that we use and what do you need to know about them. Okay? So, well, you know uh, when they break down and you have to peek under the hood, you also uh, want to know because it will help, we will know about abstraction because it helps you understand what kind of bugs can they cause and how you find them and so on. But knowing the hardware software interface ultimately is going to make you better programmers. It's going to help you begin to understand important concepts that have evolved uh, in um, building ever more complex computer systems.